once you understand a lot of these movements fall onto a spectrum. Today I'm going to talk about why this movement and this movement are on the two opposite ends of the same spectrum. So what I mean by that is the squat or you could call it triple extension spectrum. So in order to explain what I mean by that, we'll start with just a simple squat. I always elevate my heels for squat so I can go deeper as my ankle range gets better. So when you get into a squat, you got three joints doing the vast majority of the movement. The hip, the knee, and the ankle. I'm gonna be ignoring the ankle because it's not extremely crucial to the movements. Not to say it's completely irrelevant, but for this example, it's kind of irrelevant. In this position right here, both my knee and hip are basically at their fullest flexed range, especially my knee. My hip could be a bit further, but basically these two are doing the vast majority of the movement up and down. And in the seated good morning, we're completely isolating the hips. And in the sissy squat, we're completely isolating the knees. So I was thinking about this one day when I first got introduced to fitness, I viewed deadlifts and squats as basically opposites. I thought deadlifts were more of a hamstring related exercise and squats were more quad related exercise. Now there is some truth to that, but they're very, very far from opposites. They're actually much closer to each other than they are further away from each other. So in a deadlift, you're getting here and then lifting up, right? Knees, hips, they're flexed here and they extend on the way up. With a squat, it's basically the same thing. Your weight isn't here, it's either on your back or no weight at all. Your knees flex on the way down, same with your hips, and they both extend on the way up. So I realized both of these movements are actually quite similar. The weight is a bit differently loaded, it could be on your back or in your hands, which is then loading into your shoulders, but they're very similar. So I wanted to take it a step further with what other things are similar, what other things are basically doing hip and knee extension. The seat of the good morning is entirely hip extension, and the sissy squat is entirely knee extension. They eliminate the other joint. So this is where the idea came in, and I know I'm not the first person to think of this, so I'm not trying to claim that this is a revolutionary thought, but it's definitely good to be aware of this whenever you're programming things. So let's just start on one end of the spectrum and cycle all the way through. So, with the seat of the good morning, put our feet on the front, Knees locked, and we're completely isolating the hips. My range is not great with these. I don't know if my back is right. But this is completely hip dominant, specifically hip extension in the long range. Now, let's go one step further, still making it hip dominant, but adding a tad bit of knee movement in a Romanian deadlift, full range Romanian deadlift. You can see the butt shoots back, but the knees are still flexing and extending just a tad. It's nothing crazy, but the knees are involved. Now, if we want to go a step further, let's say a traditional style deadlift that you would see most people in the gym do. You're gonna have a bar right around here with the weights. The knee is significantly bending more, but the hips are still heavily involved. Now let's go one step further with an ask your grass squat. Ideally, this slam would be a little bit less, but this works. Here, we have a significant amount, you could say even say equal amount of knee and hip extension involved. They're both, I would say, fairly equally involved. Both are flexing down to their full range and extending all the way up. Now, one step further, this is just basically explaining the entire spectrum. We can do a hack squat. So you can also do this with a slant. The main idea with the hack squat or a VMO squat is it's more knee dominant. So my knees are shooting straight forward. My hips are still involved, but as you can see, they're only closing to about 90 degrees versus an ass to grass squat, they were closing significantly more. So hips are still involved. Hips are still extending on the way up, but the knees are doing the vast majority of the movement. We can do one more final step, close off the spectrum, and that's sissy squat. Just like the seated good morning locked the knees and was exclusively a hip movement, we're gonna do the opposite here. Lock the hips by squeezing the glutes, pushing the hips forward, and exclusively move the knees.
hips still locked throughout the entire movement. That's a fairly challenging one. So that's the entire spectrum. There are plenty of other movements in there. So you do a VMO squat instead of a hack squat. They're similar, just a bit of a different dynamic with the foot and ankle. You can do 45 degree back extension as another example of isolating the hips, eliminating any knee movement. That's more of a short range one, but there's plenty to add here. Playing with different ranges, different loads, but the basic idea that blew my mind when it finally clicked for me, and again, I know plenty of other people have thought of this, is all of these movements are simply knee and hip extension movements. Some have an equal split of hip and knee extension, ATG squat, for example. Some are entirely hip dominant, the seat of good morning, and some are entirely knee dominant, the sissy squat, or even the reverse Nordic or the human knee extension, whatever you want to call it. So this is definitely just a great idea, something to just add to your thoughts when you're programming for yourself or you're programming from a for a client. These are all hip and knee extension movements, what range you do, what selection of the workouts is up to you to figure out. But I definitely think it's a valuable sort of idea to have and to explore new training possibilities. So let me know in the comments what you think. Um, I'm sure the exact same thing would apply for a triple flexion idea. So let's say the baseline triple flexion movement is a reverse squat, right? Where you're pulling like this, there is knee flexion and hip flexion going on. You can exclude, you can completely isolate hip flexion. You could say, not completely isolate, but for intensive, for the hip flexion purposes, you can say in an ATG split squat, you know, straight leg, leg raises, that's isolating the hip flexion. You can isolate the knee flexion with Nordics, with um, hamstring curls. The same idea applies. Triple extension is of course more popular in the fitness world. Yeah, let me know what you think. I love this topic um, and hopefully it'll help you figure out your training and figuring out programming. I know I keep ranting, but for me, I used to think of these movements as very, very different. I didn't understand the spectrum idea. So I would see deadlift and seated good morning and 45 degree back extension as completely different movements, as, as different as chin-ups and external rotation are, right? But they are different. They are working different ranges, you know, short to long range, but they can be used in conjunction. Once you understand a lot of these movements fall onto a spectrum, it's more easy to apply into your program. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, let me know what you think in the comments.